Hello and welcome to our final lecture in GIT 437. This time we'll be talking about digital color and the various ways that we can accomplish that. It's going to be a short lecture. Really, we're just going to cover some high points on the topic and I'll leave you to the reading and some activities that are built into this week's learning objectives. So as a quick recap, we understand how humans see color. Our eyes are sensitive to light. We have cone cells that are sensitive to red light, green light, and blue light, which are just small portions of the visible light spectrum, which encompasses everything else. We understand and just review, hopefully, that that big slice of visible light is just another small light of all light that's out there, which is just electromagnetic radiation. So us being able to perceive differences in a very small slice of that electromagnetic radiation spectrum is pretty impressive. And the fact that we can distinguish between three different wavelengths and that we can interpolate the, the uh, colors in between those three is, is pretty cool. And that sets up for how we perceive color or how we use color in digital systems. So let's talk about color and just how we see color in the real world first. So this picture of a red car here, we can say a few things and just in common speech, we would say that it's a red car. Uh, hopefully we all understand that red isn't necessarily a characteristic of the car. It's the fact that the material in the paint of that red car is actually absorbing all the light except for red light. So red light is reflecting off of that more so than green or yellow or blue or anything else. And so because what we're seeing is the red light that's reflected off of that, that's how we perceive the color of the car. But it's still, it's just a human construct. We perceive it as red because we see red light or the receptors in our eyes are picking up more red light than anything else. So on a monitor, that color is generated using just those three sensitive colors that we have, red, green, and blue. Our cones and our eyes are sensitive to those three and, and not really anything else, except a little bit. There's some overlap there. It's not a pure cutoff, but it's close enough that a device like a monitor or a phone or a tablet or whatever can actually show just three distinct pixels of color, sub pixels, I guess you could say. And by blending those together, turning off one and leaving the other two on will give you a certain color or turning them all off, turning them all on. Uh, it's interesting to see. So there's a little GIF playing, a little animation in the bottom right corner of the screen that kind of shows that if the red pixels are turned on, the screen's red. Red and green together makes yellow and on and on. You'll see that cycle through that GIF if you want to keep watching for a minute. But uh, the, the process isn't too complex, but it's interesting to consider how that works. So we're going to look at a few numbers on the next slide. So um, in some of my other classes, we spend a bit more time on this. So we haven't in this class. I'm assuming that most of you kind of have the concept down at this point. But just to review, an image with a one bit bit depth means that it's like a light switch. We can turn that bit of information either on or off. It's a one or a zero. We're talking about binary. So how the data is stored in the image file. So on or off, we have either light or dark, so black or white. That's all you're going to get in a one bit image. If we want to have a grayscale image, then we need to have eight bits, which eight bits, if you were to take this analogy further, we have a light plate, a switch plate with eight light switches on. We can toggle them all on or off. Then we can put them all on. We can put them all off, half on, half off, and we can make 256 different combinations of on and off between those eight light switches. So quite a few options. That equals 256 levels of brightness. So if you're in Photoshop and you see the slider on your levels, it goes from zero to 255. Those are our 256 levels in our 8-bit image. Okay, so when we get into color, we have three channels, red, green, and blue. And each of those is 8 bits. So 256 for each of the red, green, and blue, and that equals about 16.777 something million different combinations of colors you can come up with. So if we have a really dark red and a really bright green and a dark blue, then it's going to be kind of a green, but it's going to be balanced out between those. We could open up Photoshop and play with this in the color picker, but I hope this is pretty much just a review. If, if it's not, then, then be sure to look at the activities that I posted under this week's um, learning materials section on Canvas. 
All right, so we know how to monitor display color. Now the configuration of those subpixels, those red, red, green, and blue subpixels can vary. Um, the top image there, I don't know if any of you are old enough to know that, but it's a CRT monitor. Um, <laughs> and they use slightly different technology. The bottom is a, a kind of a cutting edge uh, ISO monitor. It's a LCD monitor with uh, built-in hardware calibration in the device and a, a glare shield around it. So in this situation, when we're talking about color critical things, it is critical that you have a monitor that can support your workflows. Uh, if you are constantly editing uh, high-end imagery photographs, for example, that have bright, vibrant colors in the scene that you're capturing, then and your screen just simply isn't capable of displaying all of those colors, then you're going to have potential issues. Or worse yet, and more common, is that your screen is just simply not displaying the right colors that are actually in the file because it's not profiled or calibrated. Those are essential. Uh, the viewing conditions can really make a difference too. The RGB lighting that's really trendy and popular for gamers and, and everybody else it seems like these days is horrible <laughs> for color critical viewing. Uh, a room that's lit up purple like you see in this picture here would lead you to make terrible color decisions in your editing. So if you're watching movies and playing games, then then great. It's, it's uh, fantastic, I suppose. It's not my cup of tea personally. But for color critical things, Ideally, you're going to want the room that you're working in to have neutral colors and low lighting. Uh, if, if I had my choice about how I paint my workspace at home, then my walls would be an 18% gray and my lights would be pretty dim. But uh, we don't always get a pick, so I just turn the lights off. <laughs> if that's your situation, then you can do the same. All right, so like I said, there's not a lot we're going to cover today. Uh, one last thing I want to talk about is, is the way that digital cameras work. So again, this is a topic that's covered very heavily in other classes, but just as a quick review in here, what you see on the right hand side is kind of a, a really simplified version of a camera sensor. The gray squares underneath that on that grid, those are indicating the, um, the actual photo receptors of a camera sensor. So each one of those is going to absorb a little bit of light and measure how bright the light is hitting the sensor in that location. Over the top of that, you have an RGB pattern of colored filters. So think of those like colored sunglasses that you'd wear. And, and if I'm wearing green sunglasses, then that means that only the green light is going to come through and it's going to filter out the red and the blue. And that's exactly what happens on this camera sensor because the pixels of the camera, the, the photoreceptors, those little gray squares, all they're doing is measuring how much light is coming in. They aren't capable of determining whether that light is a certain color or not. And so by filtering out different wavelengths, then we can take that data and we can interpolate it. We can demosaic it is the term that we use for saying this particular photoreceptor captured a certain amount of blue light and the one next to it had this much green and the one next to it had this much red. And so using the blend of those percentages, we can come up with an actual color value one of millions and millions of different colors. So that's, that's the basics of it. Now I would encourage you to, uh, to dig deep into the reading, the assigned reading this week about monitors and cameras and go through the activities that are posted under the learning, learning, uh, section of canvas as well.